What's up, guys? Testing, testing. Let me know if you guys can hear me. Quickly, let me know if you can hear and see me on the stream. What's up, guys? The stream. What's up, guys? Whoa, 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 whoa. What's up? What's up? Can you got? All right, cool. All right, I can hear you, Arnold. All right, sweet, 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 sweet. So we got Bruce, Larry, Victor, Ron. What's up, Ke Kelvin, Victor, Paul, Carroll. What's up, Paul? Gerald, Larry, ha Harold again. A Aaron Smith. What's up? What's up, Arnold? What's up, Russ, Jack, Peggy, Sue, Jim, Kutch. Yo, yo, David Lane. What's up, everybody? Hope everyone is doing well tonight um, all the way in the U.S. and from around the world. Thank you for tuning in. It is now 9.30 a.m. in Japan and a uh, little cloudy, overcast day today, but still can't complain. Um, man, we've been getting a lot of protests around the U.S. now, or all around the world, uh, London as well, Canada also protesting uh, with what's going on with um, uh, what's his name that got uh, that got killed I forgot his name I'm drawing a blank but a lot of crazy things going on guys um, anyway um, if you guys want to type in the chat quickly uh, where are you tuning in from? Well, we got a lot of people tuning in. So for all you newbies tuning in, how many non-VIPs? Any newbies tuning in? We'll probably get more people tune in later. Um, but yeah, it's it's getting crazy out there. I do not agree with the rioting and looting as well. I mean, come on, it's only it's just making things worse. You know, you're making they're making things worse. People are getting crazy. And like what timing, you know? After two months of people being locked down. You know, now I feel like the rioting is just, it's just people, people are also rioting because they've been locked down for so long. You know, it's like, it's like putting gasoline on people who are already pissed off about being home all the time with this whole pandemic thing. And then now you got this. So it's, it's a way for people to, to, I don't know, get crazier. I don't know, man. It's just, it's, we're living in some really crazy times right now. So anyway, let's move on to some Q and a guys. <clears throat> I don't know. Let's see. Let's see what happens. But let's do some quick auto body Q and A. I know everybody's tuning in here. We got some questions. Uh, let's go ahead and take care of our fellow people here on the call with questions. So if you have a question, please type it in. <clears throat> and I do have an update as far as um, the whole auto body shop thing with me. Um, Arnold, how did you send it, Arnold? I don't think I got it. Let me check quickly to see if I got it. How did you send it? Okay, let's see. I got I got images, Arnold. I'm looking at them right now. Um, I got a bunch of images with your Ford truck, correct? Testimonial assistance question. So I got, I did not, doesn't look like I got a video file or anything, Arnold. We'll have to figure it out. 530 you sent me and then I got pictures. I just got pictures. Oh, I got it. I got a YouTube link. I got a YouTube link. I got it. Oh, you're awesome, dude. I got it. You are awesome. I got it. I got it. Thank you so much. All right, guys. So um, I got it. I'll talk to you later about that. We'll talk later. We'll talk later. I want to just help out and I want to do the Q&A first. I know we've got people waiting on here. Um, so let's make it happen and then we'll talk about a few other things. Awesome. Very, very excited to, to watch that. Thank you so much. 
So all of you guys, all of you VIP guys, Learn Auto Body VIP guys, if you send in a video testimonial talking about how you found us, how Learn Auto Body and Paints helped you and how you recommend it to others, we'll send you a free Auto Body VIP shirt. It's the black one that I wear. I don't have one here in Japan. I should. I think I gave the last ones I had away. But we will mail you a free Learn Auto Body VIP shirt. Just cover shipping and handling and you're going to be pimped out with a VI. It says VIP, learn auto body, get a free shirt, nice shirt quality and all. Just letting you know, just mail it into us. Okay. Um, all right. So I'm going to kind of scoot up a little here um, and just kind of read out the long things we got. So Harold says, VIP Kansas, I ordered an X27 gun, 2.0 needle and quick cup at Zula. Um, Zula had very speedy delivery and kept me posted on orders after they were out. Can't try, can't wait to try them out. That's awesome, dude. Keep me posted. Um, best way of the day. Okay. Best show of the day beats the news. Thank you, Arnold. Um, best metal thickness for patch panels and general body work. I would say if you match what you're working on is the best bet. So anywhere, you know, 18 gauge, 16, 18 gauge in that area. Um, what's up, VIP Syracuse, New York? What's up, Steve, Alexander, Chris, Nick? Okay, I'm getting down to the questions here. Um, best way to blend a quarter panel, please. Nick, I believe you're VIP. If you are VIP, please check out the blending videos that we have. Um, it is in there. Um, Paul says, I have used adhesion promoter on aluminum rims, then primer and paint. Steel wheels for primer and paint. Awesome. Sounds great. Peggy says, getting ready to add two coats of clear on existing color coat, clear coat. The existing clear was sprayed by someone else and was sprayed pretty dry in places. What grit sandpaper should I use prior? Uh, you could use a 800 grit Peggy Sue um, and just be sure not to cut through to the base. But if you can get that uh, clear coat flat with 800 grit, your, your new clear coat will fill those scratches up and it will look very, very nice. Um, anything finer. I mean, I, you can go with a thousand, but I would rather 800, 800 is a good clear coat, sanded clear coat grit to flow coat over. Just make sure that when you're done, you don't have any deep sand scratches in it. Because sometimes when you're using a brand new piece of sandpaper, it will scratch it because it's brand new. But as you use it, you know, it'll, you need to just make sure that you're over, you know, your, uh, the sanded surface looks very matte color and even across the whole panel, right? If you see, because sometimes you'll have a matte color sanded and then you'll see one scratch through it, right? You're going to want to make sure to get that scratch out. You know what I mean? Uh, because sometimes in sandpaper, you might have one piece of rock in there, like, you know, that just cuts through your clear coats in some areas. You That does happen. So just be sure you don't have any other sand scratches, deep sand scratches besides the 800 uh, before you clear it. All right. Alexander says, hey, Tony, why did I get an Erolia like when I put paint around my bodywork on a fiberglass Corvette top, but it was not noticeable when I had sanded down my primer. Um, that's total, totally normal. Sometimes you'll get like a, I, I don't know what you're saying there. Uh, I don't know what you're trying to say there. Aro Arolia, does anybody know? But I'm, I'm assuming it's probably because there are some parts of your body filler where it absorbed the primer than the outer areas. That's what happens. And if you sand it, it goes away and that's normal, but you want to make sure that sometimes you want to make sure you give it some extra coats of primer. So it fills all that in. So when you sand it, it's, it filled in all the parts that was absorbed by your body filler. Cause sometimes, you know, your body filler will absorb it and some body fillers absorb primer more than others. Uh, and I noticed some of the cheaper body fillers will absorb it because they're more porous and there's more holes in it. You know, it'll it just absorb it, not pinholes, but just the, the type of body filler. Hopefully that makes sense. <clears throat> um, Arnold says, hey, Jack, Callis, hope all is well. Tony's trying to purchase the air sander you recommend, hook and loop for sticky paper. Okay. What MIG welder is everyone using these days? 
if you guys want to copy on that. I have a Lenkos, uh, not Lenko. Um, yeah, I think it's a Lenko MIG welder as well. Um, I just got mine at Home Depot. Basic MIG welder. I forgot the model number. I don't, I don't have it in front of me right now. It's all covered in overspray, but there's a lot of MIG welders out there. Um, will this be correct since I already have two paint jobs on it? Do I need to worry about adding a third? I noticed that the paint has been peeling on corners and seams. Okay, so Victor says, I'm working on a 65 Mustang. It appears that my car has been painted twice. The original factory paint job, then a completely again from an uh, adjacent repair. I noticed that the paint has been peeling on corners and seams. I'm planning on sanding these areas to metal and feathering the existing paint back. Would this be correct? Since it's already has two paint jobs, do I need to worry about adding a third? Uh, well, Victor, it depends if you're going to be doing like a, a complete restoration, it might be a good idea to sand it all off down to metal, put an etch primer on it, put a 2k filler primer on it, and then, uh, sand it down and get it ready for body work, uh, for body and paint. You know, um, if you're going to be, if this is a car that's not super sentimental and you just want to get a nice paint job over it, you could absolutely paint over that. Uh, but I would really recommend the primer uh, filler primer sealer. So there's a lot like advantage. If you add 10, 15% more reducer to that 2k filler primer, it becomes more of a sealer. Okay. And you still need to cut that down and sand it before base coat and clear coat. All right. So, um, feathering it is a good idea. Feathering your paints and the chipping parts and all that, getting it feathered. And then you'd want to put a 2k filler primer sealer on top of it, right? Put a few heavy coats on it, get it covered. And then, go ahead and whack that down with 400 grit and you'll be ready for paint. So that's fine. You could do that. Absolutely. You just got to seal it. Okay. With that sealer primer. <clears throat> Should I get my car fixed at a body shop or a dealer? Uh, it all depends. You know, a body shop is, will be cheaper probably than a dealer and not all dealers will just take body jobs. Um, especially if you don't have a warranty on it, but if you most likely, if you take it to a dealer, they're going to sub it out to a body shop. A lot of dealers don't do in-house body repair, only some of them. So keep that in mind. Uh, what's up, Richard Gomez? Steve says, what's the fastest way to polish aluminum lip on rims that are oxidized and cracking and peeling? It's on a polished lip and then painted inside the rims and spokes. So if you're going to polish aluminum, a uh, most, I don't know if you're, you're saying it's ox oxidized, cracking and peeling oxidized is cool. Cracking and peeling means there might be a clear coat on it. Um, what you're probably going to want to do is just sand it with 1500 grit and just sand it all out. And then you're going to want to sand it with 2000 grit. You can sand to 2500 grit. You could sand to 3000 grit. Sanding will basically polish it up. And then you're going to want to final polish it with like mother's aluminum polish you know that will do it but for for oxidation and pitting and all of that on aluminum you're going to want to sand it out and you would use water sanding um with you know like i said anywhere from 15 to 2500 grit and just go finer and finer grits as you take all that out you guys get what i'm saying all right so hopefully that helps um, in what situations do you use sealer? So sealer is good guys to really seal up your body work and your primer. But like I said, there are, there are 2k filler primers that become a sealer. It's like a, a common, a hybrid. Like I use it all the time. Shop line has it. Um, advantage has it. It's basically a filler primer sealer. So all you have to do is add a little bit more reducer. It thins it out a little bit. And it's a primer sealer, okay? Um, and it's it's a really good foundation for putting base coat, clear coat over it, okay? And I like to finish it off, like I said, with wet sand, 400 grit, and you're good. There are other situations where you have your car ready for paint, and then you're going to want to just put a sealer on it right before your paint job. And that's good, too. And you could they have tintable sealers, and you can do all of that. It's just another step in the spray booth. And... 
a lot of that is, you know, if you're going to be putting a $10,000, $20,000 paint job on your car, you want to make sure you have a good sealer under it um, because it will make your color lay on really nice, your base coats. All right. But again, you can get a primer filler slash sealer that'll do the same exact thing. Okay. Um, okay. Let's see. Okay, so Arnold answered the polishing um, question that I had. He came with a little bit more aggressive answer. Go with 600 wet and then up to 1,000 and you can polish it. Yeah, you can go that way as well. Again, it's all about sanding it out and then going toward a finer and finer sandpaper because you could literally polish chrome just with sandpaper. Like if you use 3,000 grit, you can get it so glossy and shiny that just if you just rub it out with a little bit of mothers after that, it looks like chrome, you know, like really nice. And that's something I actually want to get done to my 67 Chevelle centerline rims. Um, okay, so I answered your question, YouTuber. Uh, guy YouTuber, Russ said, do it yourself, join VIP. <laughs> Thank you, Russ. What's up, Tony? Lucas Long. Long from Oregon, VIP member. What's up? Yeah, so yeah, Arnold probably knows a lot more with, with aluminum. So 600 wet sand, that's why I said that. So um, good. So Arnold, what are you saying? If you could recap Arnold uh, with the aluminum, to, to polish aluminum, what are you saying? 600 wet sand, go to 1,000 and then polish? Or could they go to like a 2,000 grid as well? Could they go down? Because I've... That's what I've done, and I've had really good results. Um, because I've had I've had uh experiences where I polished a rack on one of my handguns, aluminum handgun. The rack was aluminum, okay, not the barrel. I had aluminum rack, and I polished the whole thing down. I started with like I think four hundred. I went to eight hundred thousand, fifteen hundred. By the time I was down to fifteen two thousand, it was like a mirror finish on my rack. Um, on one of my handguns. So that's just, you know, from experience. Um, Victor says, I heard that when you paint with metallic paint that you should ground the car. Is that true? Not really true. You don't have to do that. Um, I've never had an issue. As long as, you know, you, you basically touch the car, ground yourself before you start painting, you shouldn't have an issue. I never had issues with that, uh, with grounding the car. Have you ever tried Tamco paint products? I have, um, and I guess they're pretty good products. I, I you know, don't really use them that much anymore. Um, how do I join VIP? Uh, so, guys, for all you non-VIPs on here, if you want to check out VIP, um, all you have to do is go to this link right here. I'm going to drop a link for you where you can check out uh, VIP and learn all about it, learn about all the programs and trainings that you're gonna get in VIP as well. So I'll just drop that link here. Uh, somebody says, what's the difference between a $5,000 paint job and a $20,000 paint job? So Larry, so to answer that question, it's basically the bodywork prep, you know, because you can have crappy prep under your bodywork, right? You could just be filling all of your rust with Bondo, you know, using cheap materials, not giving a crap and putting a single stage enamel paint job on, which is like a $2,500 paint job, or you could be replacing panels. You can be doing body work correctly. You can be using the best um, uh, materials, the best sealers, the best primers, you know, uh, the best base coats and clear coats, and somebody who knows what they're doing. That's the difference between a $2,000 paint job and a $20,000 paint job. Um, 600 grit, work your way in up to 1,000. Wet sand should be fine. You could go up to 2,000. It will be smoother. But for wheels, up to 1,000 will be fine. Awesome. So, Arnold, are you saying 1,000 grit, wet sand, the aluminum? After that, use like a mother's polish? Is that what you're saying? Because, I, dude, I know mother's polish. Like, I swear by that stuff. I love using mother's on aluminum. Um, It really, you know, you get that the, your cloth turns all black and you see it and it looks like brilliant, you know, buffed out aluminum looks beautiful 
The VIP course is minimum cost. The LABAP manual is free. Thank you so much, Russ. Um, Bruce Barnes, where do you start? Russ, Russ, you should send in a video testimonial, man. I want to get you a VIP auto body shirt. Send in a three-minute video testimonial, man, um, talking about VIP, how it's helped you, and you know how, how you recommend it, and we will send you a free auto body shirt, dude. Where do you start painting a car and where do you finish to keep it dry from spraying on the finished panel? So Bruce Barnes, there is a method and I definitely you encourage you to check out Learn Auto Body VIP here. What's up, Gareth? I see ya. Mother's Polish or you can go to a semi-truck chrome shop and get a green brick they use to police their tanks. And buff out with a buffing, a budding wheel, buffing wheel. Oh, awesome stuff. Mother's polish, or you can go to semi truck and get a green brick they use. I wonder what that stuff is called. Interesting, interesting. Um, LR Wilson says Can fisheye eliminator be used in clear coat? What is a good choice for a water separator for a 60 gallon compressor? So, I, ha I have a water separator filter. Um, I'm using the Ingersoll Rand um, uh, water filters and separators. Can I wear my Boss Painter shirt? Yeah, absolutely. Of course. Please do. Russ, yes. Um, LR Wilson, we also have vlogs that I talk about what water filters I use. So if you have time, check out learnautobodyandpaint.com, guys, for all of you newbies out there. And, um, and check out the blog area, and there's a search bar. If you type in, like, water filter or air compressors, you'll actually get um, a ton of blogs and videos and all that stuff that will help you out. Guys, hit the like button super quickly. <laughs> Why not? Oh, sorry. It's a brown brick called Tripoly Buffing Brick. Awesome. I got to check that out. And that's strictly for aluminum, right? Let's see if we can pull that up for everyone here. And, um, oh, wow. Interesting. I've never seen this product before. Buffing Compound Brick. Wow. This stuff looks pretty crazy. I will keep, thank you so much. I will keep you posted. We'll see, we'll see what this stuff can do. Currently unavailable. Gerald says, just joined VIP. I'm wanting to paint a Pontiac Fiero. Any tips? Yes, the tip is actually start with the VIP program. Start from the A to Z, how to paint your car. You're going to get a lot of answers right in there. Because to ask me any tips right now without looking at your car, without seeing what you got is very, very hard for me to say anything. So I would say start going through the video courses, you know, go through some of the courses you're going to, you know, after going through one of the courses, you'll have a, a very good idea of how to tackle your project. And then you jump on video like this and you say, hey, I got this question I'm doing, you know, a little bit more detailed. I can help you out a lot better. All right, dude. Truck drivers use it on their rigs. <clears throat> Painting an engine the same color as the base coat of the car. Special paint needed for the heat. Um, painting an engine, same color. Well, if you're doing the block, the engine block, I would highly recommend using a heat paint. And you, they, you can get a lot of that. Um, in aerosol cans. I forgot the brand name. Duplicolor makes an engine paint, an enamel engine paint. Um, I think it's over 500 degrees or something like that. It's really good block paint. But if you're doing engine compartment accessories, you can use your regular paint. No problem. As long as you make sure you put adhesion promoter and you're prepping the pieces correctly, you can use um, your regular base coat, clear coat <clears throat> on those pieces. Okay, I wouldn't. That's that's what it is. VHT engine paint. That's what I'm talking about. 
Um, and I believe that I believe Duplicolor makes that. So I would I would not use regular base coat clear coat on your block um, because you'd have a chance of it bubbling later and peeling and cracking and peeling off because of the extreme heat. But again, I would use a VHT engine paint. Krylon makes it, Duplicolor makes it. Get something similar color to your project. There are a lot of colors out there. And then maybe like your your valve, you know, your your valve covers you could paint. Um you could try and, and use a, a base coat, clear coat. I don't know about, it depends what kind of engine you're working on. But if you if you have like plastic shrouds and plastic coverings, that stuff, if you prep correctly with a adhesion promoter and give it a light coat of primer, you can use regular base coat, clear coat. I've done that and I haven't had any issues with any uh, peeling. <clears throat> so... Yeah, definitely check that stuff out. Brandon says, I have an epoxy primer sealer gray feather fill G2 black and rust damage with, with Dolphin and fiber light to repair. What order should I fix, lay the primers down for bare metal base before a dark base coat? <clears throat> so, so basically you get it down to metal. You would put your epoxy primer number one. You would sand that smooth. You would put your feather fill G2, although I think it could be overkill. But you would do your feather fill on top of it. Um, sand that flat. Make sure it's all blocked out flat, looking smooth with 400 grit. And um, if you have any deep imperfections or whatever, you would put your dolphin glaze okay, on top of that. Um, and then you would prime those areas again. Block that out 400, and then you're good for base coat, clear coat. Hopefully that makes sense. Have you ever painted with a turbine high volume? Not yet, but I do plan to do something like that. So I will keep you posted. And as far as the whole shop thing, I'll, I'll let you know within the next one month, I'll have a definite answer. We're going to be making a big move in the next 30 days. So I'm not going to kind of like let you know what's happening right now, but within 30 days or so, we'll be making a big move and I'll definitely know what's going on by the 1st of July um, as far as what's happening with the LABAP garage. We're naming it Paradise Garage. So maybe you guys will know we're going to have some Paradise Garage uh, caps, some hats, some shirts. All that cool stuff, you guys will be able to get it. Paradise Garage, guys, coming to you live. Okay. Um, at some point, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna paint a hard top for my Boxster to treat the inside and outside as to different jobs. Considering I can't spray when I'm just sitting on the stand. Well. You might have to break it up into two pieces, you know, paint the outside, let it dry, flip it over, mask, make sure that outside is masked. This way you can get the inside without getting over spray. <clears throat> Richard says, I plan to paint my truck cab white, then add another color next day. Is it okay to use an inner clear, then clear both colors together the next day? You could do that. If you're going to be putting clear on the next day, you're fine. Um, I wouldn't wait more than than 24 hours. So, if you know, if you're doing it within a 24-hour window, you can clear base coat. Okay, if it's going to be longer than that, put a fresh coat of base on. On top of that, you don't have to sand it or anything. Just hack it down. Put a fresh coat of base coat. Um, let that flash <clears throat> and then put your clear coat on top of that. Yes, we will give you a scoop, Jack. Um, I would say, I mean, definitely, definite, definite by, by the beginning of July, um, we're going to have an answer. It just takes time sometimes to do these moves and all of that, and it's crazy. Uh, Richard Gomez, I plan to paint my truck cab white, then add another. I, I read that. I read that. Um, Tony, what do you, when you have clear coat peeling, do you put primer in those areas when you're done sanding? Yes, you do, especially if it's a bad clear and you're, you're kind of sanded down to multiple layers. Whenever you're down to multiple layers, guys, you're going to want to prime those areas to seal it because sometimes you're going to get a chemical reaction if you spray a single stage over it 
you might get a reaction around those areas. Okay. Even a base coat, clear coat, you might get an, a, a reaction. So, you know, I always say if you're feathering clear coat, faded spots, you get down to metal in some areas, you're cutting through a couple layers of paint. Um, you're going to want to prime and seal those areas. Okay. Primer is a sealer guys. Okay. Primer is a, a, a type of form of sealer. Um, okay. Awesome. You don't have to, you could just clear it the next day. To, okay. Arnold answered that. <clears throat> what causes a texture look after painting? So I'm thinking, Larry, you, you painted, you got your clear coat on and it, it, it looks a little dried up and textured a few days after. Is that what you're talking about? If that's what you're talking about, that's called dry back. And that's normal with most clear coats. You're going to get that. And it's not the painter's fault, you know, because the paint cure, as long as you're mixing your paints correctly, right? And if that happens, it's just a clear coat. Sometimes you're going to, the gloss is going to go away. And that happens with a lot of cheaper clear coats inexpensive clears, inexpensive reducers, you get that dry back. So the only cure for that is to basically sand that down with 1500 grit or so, get down to 2000 and buff it out. Okay. If it's really bad, you might have to sand with 800, you know, if you got really dried out 800 grit, but mostly a thousand, 15, 2000 grit, and then you buff it out and that'll clear uh, your clear coat from having that it's pretty normal guys and um, that's why when i do any type of paint jobs especially my own custom jobs that i want to look really nice i use a high quality clear coat i'll go out i'll spend the extra money and um, put a good clear coat on it a high solids uh clear coat that doesn't have that dry back you know that die back uh dryness after about a week or two you know of of painting so hopefully that helps Your garage in Texas, what is the dimensions of that, Tony? Looking at some houses here in Perth with property, but I'm planning on putting a paint booth in there. How high would the garage have to be? I would say if you have a anywhere from a 12 to 15 feet in your shop, you'd be fine. Um, inside my shop, I believe is, I think my shop is like 14 or 15 feet in there. And it's a 1,800 square foot shop space. All right. So hopefully this helps, guys. Um, yes, your gun could also be giving you orange peel. So I was, you know, there's multiple, you know, answers to a question without looking at the product. So if you're talking about orange peel, so there's something called orange peel, and then you got dry back. Die back is which when your clear coat kind of dries after a few days, it, it, it was glossy before, but then it kind of doesn't look as glossy. Okay. Um, and then you got orange peel where it just looks like on an orange peel right after you paint it. That's orange peel. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah. All right. Guys, I am going to wrap it up. I have to finish a few trainings that I have um, for my e-commerce guys. We're, we're going to go live on Wednesday with it. I'm going to be done on Wednesday with it. So just to keep you posted, Wednesday, U.S. time. For all you newbies that want more info, go to learnautobodyandpaint.com. You can grab your free 85-page auto body manual on that page there. Um, also, if you want to learn more about VIP, there's going to be a special offer after that. Um, if you guys want to check out amazing, awesome spray guns that I personally love and recommend, check out uh, the Atom uh, products. They come with a gun bud light system for free with every spray gun purchase. And um, also, one last thing. Uh, we have a special training coming up where I'm going to break down my businesses and show you how uh, to basically profit commerce trend right now um it's a huge trend it's a multi-trillion dollar trend that's going to be going up to over six seven trillion dollars by 2023 2024 and it's a trend that's going to be continuing to grow um we're only 15 percent saturation with e-commerce in the u.s 
we have tons of room to grow. Um, and especially with all of the crazy havoc going on in the world today, um, e-commerce is going to be a growing trend. More and more people are going to be buying online. This is why you should learn to set up and sell your own little products uh, and services online and build a side business. Okay, so we're going to be doing a training on that in the next couple of days. You can get signed up for the e-commerce training that I'm doing right over here. And that's pretty much it. Guys, if, you're, if you are a VIP paid member, send in a two to three minute video testimonial on how VIP has helped you, how you found us, why you joined, how we've helped you, and how you would recommend it to others. Those four things. Send the video testimonial, upload it to YouTube, share the link with us, and we will share. We will send you a free auto body VIP shirt for uh, participating. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. So we will see you um, later this week. <clears throat> Two days and I had my paint delivered. Russ waiting on his X88. I love Russ. Russ is so cool. I love all you guys. <clears throat> yeah, e-commerce business will be great. You don't have to be worried about getting looted and burned down. Anyway, guys, I want to say thank you so much for tuning in tonight. I will see you in the next couple of days. LABAP uh, will be resuming auto body and painting this summer for sure. New projects coming. I have a couple of projects already lined up. Um, we're going to be getting cranking in July. So uh, I will keep you posted on everything. Thank you so much, guys. Smash the like button just like Arnold said. And uh, we will talk to you in a few days. Thanks, guys, for joining. Um, talk to you soon. Stay safe, guys. Bye-bye.